Hey guys, my name is Shai. Welcome to your Starseed Transmission. This is timeless and it is good for whenever you're tuning into this. And when I was meditating before turning on my camera, I was tuning into Ashtar Command and the initial message I'm feeling is that anybody watching this, you've recently been going through a period of heart healing and right now you're going to be moving into a period of sacral healing. I was feeling... <laughs> Uh, pretty intense activations to my sacral chakra while meditating. This has been a theme coming up for me quite a lot lately. I feel like moving forward, we're going to need a lot more passion to see us through. And it, this is a time to unleash our creativity. And also having more effective, more fluid boundaries with others. These are all things we're going to need coming forward. And I don't know about you guys, but I've been getting witchy activations I mean, I've always been had this passing interest in witchcraft, and I know I've been a witch in past lives on Earth, but I've never felt like it was part of my calling to be a witch in this life. But just in the last couple of weeks, stuff like that keeps coming up. I've been much more into exploring my starseed side and haven't really done anything with my witchy side, but that is absolutely coming up here and I think it has something to do with the sacral chakra so I don't know that's uh that's all I've got for right now before I pull the cards um although I do want to talk a little bit about what I mean by Ashtar command but if you'd like to skip that and skip all the shuffling and get right to the cards you can click the timestamp in the description box so Ashtar command I know when I first googled that I got back a whole mess of shit that I thought was pretty cringy and pretty weird and honestly pretty distorted and outdated. So what do I mean? Why am I even using the word Ashtar Command? Basically, I have been seeing this, what appears to me as a blue face, a blue shimmering kind of speckled, like it's almost like it's made of a bunch of tiny little pinpricks of light and the face takes up the whole of my vision. I see it when I'm meditating or when I'm uh, relaxing before I go to sleep and this face was coming in a lot for me um, like maybe five months ago right before I had a soul braid experience and I've been seeing it on and off and I didn't know who <laughs> who that was I knew this was some kind of being or collective of beings contacting me but I just didn't know who it was and I've been asking and asking and a few weeks ago I was sitting there asking and asking and I drifted off to sleep actually and but then I woke back up really quickly and ringing in my head was the words Ashtar command, like echoing around and around and around in my mind. I was like, okay, well, I finally got my answer. And I had never really, I didn't know anything about Ashtar command before then. I mean, I'd seen the word, I'd read like two sentences about, about the Ashtar command before, a few months before, but I didn't pay any attention and I just kind of skimmed past it. And I mean, I know there's that band called Ashtar Command, but that was basically it. So it was pretty weird for me to have that come up so strongly because I had never really thought about it before. And of course, then I went Googling and then I was like, this is all pretty weird. But uh, my perception, so I'm just going to share my sense here and you guys can take it or leave it, is that the Ashtar Command is kind of a loose knit collective of all kinds of different species, all kinds of different beings from all over all different kinds of star systems and galaxies and even different universes. Um, but the thing that kind of holds them together is that, you know, they're not a military there or anything like that. Like we kind of get the word command, but they are like an active group. They are definitely like they have ships, you know, <laughs> they, they are here uh, physically or, you know, non-physically if they're non-physical, but they're here, with in ships and they they're really they're just pretty active and specific in what they do they're here you know to help us and a lot of us um our collectives are part of the ashtar command so your experience and perception of the ashtar command can be entirely different than mine because we could be tuning into different collectives within this loose-knit group but that's kind of that's kind of where I'm at. That's what I'm rolling with for this. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to do the Celtic cross. I'm using the Naked Heart Tarot. And I'm going to, for these starseed transmissions, I like to do them as if they are a personal reading. So I'm going to shuffle and draw the cards on the camera. Uh, bear with me while I'm silent while I do that. And um, but yeah, if you want to skip the shuffling, uh, just hit the uh, timestamp.
Okay, here we are with the cards. We got in our center position, the sage. This would be the hierophant in a traditional tarot. This particular version of the hierophant is all about making sure you are highly connected with a higher power. In our case, I see that as our higher selves and our collectives and trusting that we are, you know, we are in this vertical alignment with them and understanding that we are downloading the information that we need. Look at this book at the top of this, uh, this little plant here. That's our collectives have more knowledge than we do, obviously, you know, than we do while we're in our bodies here. And this is a book holding, holding all of these codes. I see this as an opportunity for us to download this in. And you know what I forgot to mention is also when I was meditating, I heard the words, uh, cellular upgrade that, that is so much like this. Um, we are downloading, downloading new light codes. And this is being crossed by the Three of Cups. Interesting to me that I was just talking about feeling witchy upgrades or witchy activations. Because the Three of Cups to me, I always can think of it as the Coven card. This is coming together with your with your sisters. And if you're a man, I mean, I'm sorry for <laughs> the feminine words I'm using here. But this is coming together with your collective and with your your soul family. Look, look, look at how awesome these, these party dolphins are. I love the party dolphins. Um, so with this in the crossing position, I actually take this to mean that we've been feeling a little disconnected and we are having to come back, uh, right now we are being called to step up and step into our communities, uh, both as leaders, but not as the old paradigm of leaders, not as the kind of leader that is above, not as the professor, not as the one best expert. We are all leaders in our own networks. Like imagine it's this idea I have of how leadership is going to look in the age of Aquarius, where everything is lateral and peer networked. Of course, we have people who are have more expertise in one area than others, but everybody has expertise in some area and everybody has a lot to learn. Um, my In my day job, I work in education. And one of the first things you learn as a teacher is that, yeah, sure, you might be the teacher, but everybody has something to teach and everybody has a lot to learn. So this whole idea of teacher and student, although I don't, it's not, I saw some YouTube video the other day that was making fun of that and, uh, you know, parody, parodying this idea that teacher and student are interchangeable. And it's not that they're interchangeable. When somebody has expertise and somebody doesn't have expertise, well, clearly there's a teacher-student relationship there. But the point is that we all have something to teach and we all have a lot to learn. So moving forward into the age of Aquarius, it's going to be everybody teaching when they have something to teach and learning the rest of the time. And it is going to be a much more um, spread out lateral network. Like I really, I, I'm seeing like a fishnet right now spread out. Everybody is a nexus point and you all have something very specific, something very special and something unique to share with everybody else. And when you're not sharing that, you can learn that. So we're coming from this place of, well, let's actually see where we're coming from before I get back to that. Um, <laughs> down here in our shadow position. It's the three of swords. What did I say? We were moving on from heart healing. Yeah, this is, um, traditionally I have hated seeing the three of swords because I mean, it's, it's a heart being stabbed by three swords, right? Nobody likes to see that, but I have been attempting to evolve my relationship with it. And I am really seeing that whenever this comes up, yes, it can signal heartbreak and pain and just, some of the, your lowest of low days, but all of that is only happening to you because it is an opportunity to purge that and to heal that. So especially with this being in our deep past or shadow, this is something we have been healing. And I think for most of us, we're, we're really getting to the end of this. We're getting through a, a paradigm of heart healing, healing, exactly like I was saying earlier. And in our recent linear past is the devil. So we are also laying to rest all of these um, compulsions and addictions. And for me, this Capricorn energy is always really compulsive thinking and really feeling like we don't have enough time. You know, yeah, the devil can, can signal, uh, addictions in a more traditional human sense. But to me, it's kind of upgraded energy is time pressure. That's what Capricorns feel. Time pressure, never having enough time, got to do it right now, just always feeling like we have to manipulate time because time is against us. This feeling of time is against us. We are laying that to rest. That is in our past. 
we're moving on from that. We are now moving into this place of, you know, being the sage where we are in our vertical alignment and we are able to, since we are more connected with our higher selves than we have ever been in our human memory, we are now in perfect timing. Have you guys been noticing your timing becoming so spot on? Just the synchronicities aligning, everything working out even when you don't have to do it. That is the paradigm we're moving into. But coming back to this crossing card with the Three of Cups, um, I think there's a bit of a challenge here to integrate ourselves back into really the human collective. And I was actually thinking about this this morning. Um, when I first started this starseed journey, you know, it wasn't that long ago. It was like a year ago. I remember feeling, oh my God, I feel like I'm going to be trapped on earth until I learn to love humanity. And I thought that I could never do that because I, I just didn't see anything to love in humanity or in humans. And I was terrified of this idea of being trapped on earth for like thousands more years. And then I kind of just forgot about that. And uh, here I am a year later realizing that, wow, I actually really love being here on earth. Maybe I can't quite say yet that I love humanity, but there I do. There are humans that I love and there are things about humanity that I love. And uh, I actually really resonate with the human condition because I have been through that whole cycle of, you know, existential crises and suffering, that whole, you know, anything ever spoken about in art and poetry and music is, you know, the project of the human condition. And I resonate with that. And that was a big initiation for me, actually, because that is when I realized uh, why I'm here. It's because I resonate with the human condition. And in part, I am co-creating the human condition through my own resonance of my own consciousness, right? So um, tangent, what was I talking about? Yes. <laughs> we feel pretty alienated, obviously, from the human collective. And so the crossing, the challenge with this crossing card of the Three of Cups is to integrate ourselves back into if not the human collective, then at least a human collective. How can you get networked, um, not in, you know, a corporate, you know, career networking thing, but how can you network your consciousness with the consciousness of other beings on this planet? They don't all have, you know, they don't all have to be like, it's what I sometimes think of as matrix humans, but you guys know, just the regular type of everyday humans. They don't necessarily have to be them, but you need to get networked with people on the planet. Um, this is going, this is a challenge for you. It's a lesson you need to learn and it is going to be healing for you and it's going to be a good experience. Um, and it is going, it, and you need to do that in order to carry out the project that you're here to do, the mission that you're going to be working on throughout the rest of your life. You can't do that on a mountaintop. You need to do it in the community, at least in your community and higher self or spiritual journey. Spirit of Swords. This is the King of Swords. This guy is Sovereign Intelligence. Look at this panther. Coming out of the bushes. This is funny because I have a black cat and she was just stalking a bug. <laughs> uh, a lot like this guy. So and this is all of your potential to realize your higher consciousness, your higher specifically your overmind. I see the King of Swords as part of the overmind. We talk a lot about oversouls all the time. Um, and I know in spirituality, there can be this thing right now to kind of denigrate the mind, put the mind completely away and just be entirely right brain to be entirely intuitive, be entirely operating from your heart space. But I think that is a little bit of an overreaction, you know, because it's just the pendulum swing. We were in this masculine left brained logical rational space and we've swung we're swinging to the other extreme of a new feminine paradigm uh in you know with your heart space and and your intuition and all of that but you know we don't want to overcorrect <laughs> we want to stay in the center so there is still a place for our over mind our higher intellectual intelligence and i see that coming in here and isn't that beautiful to see uh the sage which is that higher fan growing Growing, 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 receiving these downloads straight from our overmind. Wow. Wow, look at that. Yeah, that, the, the, to me, this represents, a, we have a direct line to our overmind, to the seat of our higher intellect. And we will be able to share that with our community once we can effectively uh, integrate that. And yeah, okay, so our near future in linear terms. 
the spirit of wands, king of wands. I'm just really, really drawn to this fox. I mean, he's looking at this poor little lizard. I hope he's not going to eat him. But this fox reminds me of somebody that is completely sovereign. Just think, a fox is a canine, but, you know, most species of foxes, from what I, as far as I am aware, are solitary. And they might have their families, you know, when they're raising families, but <laughs> for the most part, foxes are solitary and they are entirely self-sufficient. They have all the tools they need within their own body in order to flourish and thrive and that is where we are going yeah and this particular king of wands the spirit of wands this deck really tries to be gender neutral you know which is cool um specifically talks about being the master of your own spiritual journey knowing that you are self-sufficient and teaching others uh, how to walk their own paths so again you need to get with your coven, get with your community, and you'll be able to lead by example, not by being, you know, a preacher, not by being preachy, not by being the professor, not by being the expert, just by being you and shining your energy out. People will be inspired to be their own leader, be their own master, just like you. And you don't even need to do much in order to teach that. You just need to do it because they will, of course, resonate with your energy and sitting in your energy will help them download light codes and it'll just be cool. So definitely there's a calling here to step into your own, your own sovereignty because you've got these two spirit cards, spirit of swords, spirit of wands, and you'll be downloading that and sharing that with your community. Okay, in our self position, we have the Six of Swords. Definitely movement going on. I've been seeing this card come up every time I use this deck, actually. I love it because this turtle, and the turtle can always symbolize a, like, knowledge. Isn't there some, some myth about the turtle that knows everything? I'm reminded of a Rick and Morty episode where Morty looks at the turtle of knowledge and knows everything or something. I can't, I can't remember. Um, anyway, this turtle, I can imagine riding him and he's, look, you can see him changing into a rainbow. He's going into a rainbow. So you guys are going forward into the rainbow land, into a new land where colors are going to be so much more vibrant. Your knowledge, your wisdom, your feelings, your connections, everything is going to be radiating like a rainbow. It is just this isn't just, you know, the grass is going to be greener when you get to the other shore. This is the universe is going to be the rainbow when you get there. You know, it's almost like you're going to the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. And uh, your environment is the Eight of Swords. I feel that this is humanity right now. So trapped in a fence of barbed wire of their own making. The problem with this is that a lot of us are probably sitting on the sidelines watching humanity go through its dark night, watching them be confused and lost and self-destructive and perpetuating their own problems. And that can be really frustrating for us because, you know, we've, we've kind of been through those energies before and for us it's in the past. And it can get really frustrating going, why are they still doing that? Like, why can't they see? Why can't they wake up? Um, you know, I guess we have to try to remember that they're going through it through these energies in their own perfect timing because we went through them before. We went, we went through it before them, but we still had to go through it. We went through it in our perfect timing and we went through it because we were in on some level more able to navigate that with less leadership. That's one of the reasons we're here because most star seeds have lived all over the place in many different galaxies and many different universes even so we just we've just done this more times we have been through the ascension process on our other planets we've done this before that gives us a little bit more experience in our even when we're even if we're still asleep and even if we don't remember we're star seeds our souls remember this process so that gives us just a little bit of an edge it is easier for us to wake up and to navigate through these um 
all these confusions and, you know, to see through the veil and to remember who we are and all of that. It's just easier because we've done it before. You know, it's kind of old hat for us at this point, even, but even look at how difficult and traumatizing and confusing and scary it is even for us. So I think it's just something to remember when we get frustrated and irritated and kind of just like with, uh, with the humans, right? We got to remember that they're just, they're doing their thing just like we did our thing and they're going to get there in their own time. And yeah, our hopes and fears, the wheel of fortune, this particular wheel of fortune is all about the cosmic turning, like cosmic cycles, like way, way zoomed out cosmic cycles. We're talking astrological cycles in our solar system, but also the greater um, galactic cycles and then up through the octaves and just everything is turning. Um, I'm hearing the song in my head, the, the wheel in the sky keeps on turning. Is that by Journey? I can't remember that song, you know, the wheel in the sky keeps on turning that, that is, <laughs> that is this everything in constant motion and knowing that the new, and it's not even so much a wheel, but spirals, everything is spiraling. And that is what we want. Obviously that's what we want. That's why we came here. We came here to ride the spiral and we came here to expand and extend and ascend on this spiraling ascension. But on a human level, I think most of us are still harboring a little bit of fear. As I was staring at this wheel, I was just reminded of the sacral chakra. And I think that is how we are going to get rid of these last vestiges of fear. I feel like this fear we have of, you know, maybe we're afraid of remembering, like seeing an alien in the physical <laughs> and going onto a ship in the physical and remembering it all. That, that's a scary. Most of the time when we're abducted, we don't remember it. You know, our family comes and beams us up or whatever, and we don't remember it because it's a little traumatizing. Or we're afraid of remembering our past lives, or we're afraid of remembering who we really are on the highest level. We're afraid of remembering our potential and our power because it, it is a lot because we are in these human bodies and on a cellular biological level, it is weird <laughs> it is still weird and it doesn't matter how long we've been awake for it is it is just all of this is still a lot and a lot all of it is still weird so now i understand why uh the sacral shock sacral chakra healing is going to be occurring <sighs> because uh our sacral so chakras i mean all of our lower three chakras have been really damaged i was actually told that really specifically a few days ago uh when i was in meditation receiving some healing that my lower chakras had been damaged by the human experience and that it is time to get them um, healed up at least enough and with a damaged sacral chakra we have we're left in power struggles we're left in feeling lack of confidence um, feeling like other people are better than us comparing ourselves to others you know having no passion no creativity no drive no energy no energy to push forward and really with, a, with that lack of confidence that comes with the damaged sacral, that is where fear sets in. So <laughs> thankfully our collectives, uh, first of all, I think it's just, it is the time on the spiral where we need to go through sacral healing. This, this is whenever you're watching this, um, really, this is really timeless. And whenever you're syncing up with this, this is when the time is for you. So it is our time for sacral healing just because that's where we are on the spiral. Also, our collectives are coming in to help us with that. So I think this is going to unfold fairly smoothly for us if we keep just, if we just keep on keeping on. And the ultimate outcome is a strength card in reverse. It was interesting that it was in reverse because I don't know how it got in reverse. I don't typically read reversals and I try to keep all my cards straight up. Not that I dislike reversals. I just, I tend to just feel the vibe on the card and decide if the reversed meaning is coming through. Um, so when a card does come up reversed, I always take note and I feel like it is trying to get my attention. So let's look at this card straight up. Strength. We all know what the strength card means. Complete inner sovereignty, getting in touch with your personal power, being able to manifest without having to manipulate external events. It is just like sitting in your, I'm thinking of Hara, your, your, your Hara. Um, if you're not familiar with that, you can Google it. H-A-R-A. -A. It is a, 
I imagine it as being located um, below the belly button. Like for me, I imagine the um, solar plexus chakra being above the belly button. Then below the belly button is the hara. And then below that is your sacral chakra. So the hara is, it's like your gut. It is the seat of your pure essence, your pure being. There's something about it that is, if you had to boil yourself down to the essence of your consciousness as it was when it came out of source, I feel like that is located in your hara. And that is kind of what I'm seeing here. But since this is reversed, uh, this really comes back to getting the uh, wheel of fortune in our hopes and fears. We're still a little bit afraid of tapping into our inner strength. We're still a little bit afraid of remembering who we really are. Of course, as starseeds, we have been remembering who we really are, but I think we've only cracked the tip of the iceberg. I think our journey goes way more deep and we might not know, you know, for 50 more years, you know, you live to be a hundred years old. You're going to look back and however you are, you are, however old you are now and go, wow, I thought I had already gone down. I thought I'd already gotten to nearly the end of the journey. And really it was, I had barely passed the starting line. So I think as we heal the sacral, this strength card will be turning right side up and we will be tuning into our our lion power. Anybody who resonates with Lyra also, um, that's definitely Lyra coming through with that with that lion card. Okay, I'd like to pull some oracle cards. This is the secret language of light. <laughs> authentic truth yes what yes okay we're talking about healing the sacral talking about getting in touch with our hara getting in touch with the pure vibration of our soul this is it this is it we have the sage down here downloading directly from your higher self authentic truth this is your authentic truth you know your truth isn't authentically yours if you're getting it from somewhere else. This card is a reminder to you. Absolutely. Just <laughs> only listen to yourself. And this is a lesson I've been learning my entire life. I'm I'm really pig-headed and stubborn. And people have described me as being independent to a fault, which I never actually understood what they meant by that. <laughs> but just to describe like where I'm coming from. And all my life, I have only ever done exactly what I thought was right and best for me. And everybody else, you know, I never wanted to do things at anybody else's expense, but I definitely just have to do what I know I have to do. And really the only regrets I ever have is when I let somebody, when I'm swayed by somebody else's opinion and I'm, and it never works out. I learned this really recently, like last week, um, a couple weeks ago, I had done something, not something particularly bad or anything. It was relatively minor, but it still bothered me. I let somebody's opinion sway me and I kind of went with what they wanted me to, what they thought I should do. And then of course I ended up really regretting it. And I was just like, okay, that is the last time I learned that lesson. Okay. I'm never doing that again. If somebody has an opinion, uh, even if it's somebody I really love and really respect, if they have an opinion that really just feels wrong to me, fuck that. Okay. I'm going to go with my gut. Okay. I'm going to tune into my Hara, my inner truth and just be, that's all I can do is be authentic. That is it, literally it. I've been thinking about this a lot lately, actually. So many of our problems, almost all of our problems, I would say, come from uh, failing to be completely authentic. Tuning into our absolute authenticity is how we will solve basically all of our problems. You might think, well, if everybody is entirely tuned in with themselves, that's just going to make a way for a bunch of assholes and anarchy. Well, no, because <laughs> we can still tune into the highest good for everyone while still being our authentic selves. Imagine a sovereign society where everybody is entirely sovereign to themselves and completely authentic, but that could still be living a golden age if everybody lives by the golden rule. The golden rule is just don't be a dick, right? Don't be a dick. You be sovereign. You be you. You be the spirit of swords. You be the spirit of wands. You live this strength card. You live your authentic truth. And don't be a dick. That's all you need to do, okay? <laughs> then we would be living, that is, to me, in my mind, that is how we usher in the golden age on earth. Everybody be authentic and nobody be a dick. That's all we need to do. 
easier said than done, but we can, you know, start, <laughs> start with ourselves. Divine Masculine. I love that this is coming out because we had those two spirit cards, which are the kings. And honestly, this is a pretty masculine spread. And if we are all tuning into our inner, our inner authenticity, there's definitely something divinely masculine about that. Not that feminine can't be authentic. And I'm sure all, you guys all know that we're not talking about males and females and human biology and all of that. We're talking about archetypal energies, right? So we don't, let's not get muddled down. Tuning into our divine masculine. That is how we overcome these fears. We have this fear of the turning of events. We have this fear of the unknown. We have the fear of our own strength even. Of course, the divine masculine with his light, the divine masculine sheds light into the darkness, brings order to chaos, brings stability to confusion, brings courage and bravery and sovereignty and authenticity in the face of the maw of madness. So when we are looking out at the world right now and seeing that everything is in complete chaos, the divine masculine is how we can sit. If we can tune into our own divine masculine, that is how we can find fearlessness and strength and authenticity in ourselves. And two cards from the Starseed Oracle. Portal. <laughs> Portal. Doors are opening. You decide. Rewards. Wild card. I get this card when... Yeah, literally, we are standing here in front of this portal. We're about to go through it, and we don't know what's going to be on the other side. Um, another thing I was thinking about literally just this morning is in a lot of readings I've been doing lately, they are all leading up to this transformation moment, this portal moment, kind of a moment where everything is going to stop and then begin again. It's like once you walk through this portal, this person is going to be transformed, and they're going to be in a whole new world. And... Of course, I would love to be able to say that I can see through the portal, I can see past the transformation, I can see past the tower moment, whatever it is, but I can't. I mean, there are people who are psychic enough and whose perspective is zoomed out enough that they can see basically all of the timelines and see uh, where you're going to go. But for me, sorry guys, I can't see through the portal. I can only see that we're walking up to this portal and I don't know what's on the other side of it. So... <laughs> there we go. And that is also why we're a little bit nervous and a little bit scared. We're afraid of the wheel turning. We're afraid of our inner strength because we don't know. This is completely unknown. This is completely unknown. Once we go through the portal, we don't know what's going to happen on the other side of it. That it that comes right back to over here, our authentic truth and our divine masculine. Tune into those qualities to help you face this portal moment with fearlessness and with courage and with strength. Lost lands, soul memories, and gifts. You've done this before. I literally said that earlier. How we have all done, I, I'm, well, maybe I should say most of us, right? But I really feel like there's only going to be a few people who see this video and resonate with it. And I really feel that anybody tuning to this video must be resonating with me on a very deep level. We've, I would say 99% chance we've known each other in past lives. We are part of various soul groups together. And so I think all of you have done this before. This is not your first ascension. This is not the first planet you've done this ascension project on. We've done this on, for most of us, many, many other planets, many, many other times. So all we need to do is remember, remember that we've done this before. Remember that even though our minds, our, our human brains sure as hell don't know, our minds don't really know because they only want to use the information that we're sure of, but our souls remember soul memories and gifts. We've done this before. You just need to tune into your inner authenticity or your inner truth, your inner strength to see you through because really deep, deep, deep down in your consciousness, you know how to do this. You just need to let, let your consciousness take the driver's seat, right? You can tune out of your mind when you're not sure and just feel your way forward. 
And that would be actually balancing out these masculine energies because um, you, you guys have probably all heard people talking about how, you know, we had the feminine paradigm and then we had the masculine paradigm and now we're into the un unified paradigm of feminine and masculine. So I really feel like whenever we're doing anything, um, I mean, some, some operations, some decisions might require more of a masculine approach. Some things might require more of a feminine approach, but overall, I think for the most part, when we're doing anything now, uh, we want a blended a blending of masculine and feminine er energies and it takes finesse and discernment to figure out okay does this decision need more masculine energy does this decision need more feminine energy how do i balance them out what do i need what is more most appropriate for the task what is the right tool for the job so we no longer get to go okay i just i live in the masculine paradigm and i do that or i live in the feminine paradigm and i do that no we have to navigate carefully with finesse that is the word that comes to mind it takes finesse right? There's no more clear cut cookie cutter rule book. We need to finesse our way through deciding which energies are more appropriate for the situation. So yeah, so here, this is quite a masculine spread, which makes sense since I was channeling uh, the Ashtar command, which I sense is mas masculine. Obviously, the, his, the namesake is the being named Ashtar. And the the being that I have actually been in contact with that uh, is representing Ashtar command to me. One of the beings, she's female, but her, her energy is super masculine. She's in a female body. Um, and I actually felt like she was a mother figure to me, but, but her energy was so masculine. So, you know, there you go. None of this is clear cut. <laughs> and I like that right at the end here, I think we have a little bit of feminine energy. And of course, oh, and I just moved that just to see this these dolphins, this coven card. So this this particular, just as an example, this particular spread has a heavy dose of masculine energy, but it is not out of balance because the feminine is still there. And we are actually being called to, I think, be masculine in our inner selves, at least for a moment, right? This isn't forever. This is just for this one pocket of energy, this one moment where it is appropriate. And then as we lean into our coven card here, into our community, um, that is when more feminine energy will be folding in and you mix it all in. <laughs> you mix it all up. I feel like I'm folding dough, right? And there we have it. So finesse, guys, finesse. It takes finesse. And just, I just keep staring at the strength card. Don't let that strength card be upside down on you, right? You can work through it and you can get to the point where you are this griffin flying into infinity. <laughs> and I think that's what I'm seeing here, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in and resonating with me. I love you guys so much. I hope to see you again soon. Bye.